There he is! Hi, baby boy! Boingy! 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 If I say boingy, he jumps. Boingy! Boingy! Who knew Looney Tunes would come in handy with raising my child? So today we're going to our friend's house. They are moving to Missouri. So we're saying bye to them. And then Toby's gonna meet Santa! Don't worry, I'll tell him the truth when he's older. Grr, I'm mad! So I've started to learn that if you sing a song, Baby gets a little bit less upset about the things he doesn't want to do. So I'm uh, using Bobby's world to get him excited about the car seat. We're going, we're going, we're going on a trip. Plane, train, taxi cab, all the choices hit. <gasps> well, at least he's not crying. Am I right? Am I right? Let's get this day started. All ready for the big day. Bye, chickens. In case I haven't mentioned it, we also do have a horse and sheep and goats, but I'll introduce them at a later time. The sheep and goats are all the way down there. They're also what we call our weed whackers. <laughs> Smarter, not harder. Our friends Ian and Irina lived about 30 minutes south of us. And as we're heading over, I wanted to share a pretty crazy story about Ian. I first met Ian when I started dating Angela right before COVID hit in February of 2020. Later that year, he straight up died in a motorcycle accident. The exact details of the story are absolutely crazy because when he was taken to the hospital, they said his body and brain suffered such severe injuries that the chances he would live were less than 1%. And even if he did survive, there was a good chance he would just be brain dead. The doctors were ready to cut him open and harvest his organs. When Angela told me this story, we were both in a really rough spot with our faith in Jesus Christ. See, we believed in Jesus, but we weren't actively walking with him. However, even worse than my situation, prior to this accident, Ian would openly tell Angela that he basically hated God. The reality is though, with our faith in Christ, we knew that if Ian died, there was a good chance he would go to hell. I remember sitting on her couch and I said to her, there's this verse in 2 Peter chapter 3 that said that the Lord is long suffering to us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We prayed this prayer that we know God isn't willing that Ian die, but that Ian come to repentance. So we humbly ask that God brings him back to life and fully restore Ian so that his heart would turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. And the actual details of this story are phenomenal and so much longer than what I'm saying here. Ian slowly recovered, but there were never any glimpses of hope along the way until he was fully healed. At first they said he would be a blind paraplegic, and then suddenly his sight came back. Then they said he would never walk again, but then his feet started moving. Everything the doctor said they were wrong about, and God heard our prayer. And there were many other people praying for him as well. I believe the Holy Spirit put this on all of our hearts to pray for him. And look, we are nobody. We are not ultra holy prophets or apostles. We are just servants of Jesus Christ who want to remain as humble as possible. A friend was dead and sadly, likely going to hell. But Jesus Christ paid for his sins and God brought him back from the dead so he could believe in Christ. And now he even has a beautiful family. God is worthy of all worship. He's the only one that could do this and he is long suffering, waiting as long as possible for all men to repent. This isn't being put up here to say, you're getting a miracle, you're getting healed, or to say that anyone you know that's hurting or dying is gonna come back to life. But the only one you can turn to is the Lord. He's the only one that can do these things. So trust in him. But most importantly, have the heart to trust in him, even if he doesn't do these things, that no matter what his will is, you submit to it. Okay, I realized I just got off track. Back to the story. We were hanging out and saying goodbye to both Ian and Irina and letting Toby hang out with Josefina, who was born five days before him. Will they get married in the future? I don't know, but I wouldn't joke about it out of respect for Ian. And you know what? Here's a cute shot of two babies. Babies. Will they get married in the future? knows? Will that be your wife, Toby? Will that be your husband? Who knows? <laughs> Find out in 22 years on Dad Blog. They were holding hands for a second. What's wrong, Josephine? Josephina suddenly decided that Toby had cooties, but he just thought it was funny, so he just hung out where he was. Baby boy. 
I'll be your girlfriend now, Toby. No girls till you're 40, Toby. After playing with Toby for a little bit, I hung out into the kitchen where we were getting breakfast cooked. Toby was in charge of watching the fireplace. But we were cooking some eggs and some biscuits and gravies. And while we ate, the babies decided they didn't have cooties anymore and they hung out. And then Ian gave me one of the best gifts ever. It is tushy. What is that? What is it, Ian? Tushy is to clean your tushy with a button. Boom. And it is yours. You giving me a bidet? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What a good friend. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. It's my Japanese genealogy. What? Wow. Now my house can feel like a luxurious suite in Las Vegas. <laughs> now my butt can be clean. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, bidets with uh, Bible verses. <laughs> Thanks, Ian! We'll know this, Ian. Every time I use the bathroom, I'll be thinking of you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, bro! <laughs> Look angry. <laughs> so we hung out a little bit longer, and then it was time to go. Say bye, baby boy! Say bye to Josephine! Bye, Josephine! Joseph. Bye, Uncle Ian. See ya. Hey. Is there a tracking device on the camera? Fine, we're leaving now. Just like and subscribe. It was time to head north. We were going to check out a local Christmas fair thing and get Toby to take pictures with Santa. On the way, we had to swing by a mall. We had to make an emergency stop at Target because Mommy had to buy, I don't know, a lot of stuff for no reason. And I found the next episode of Dad Blog Adventures. Sneak preview, world's biggest bounce house, part two. I, and I'm not even joking, am I, honey? No. I did a video about Funbox in El Cajon a while ago, and I might repost that. But this one is in Escondido, so this would be a part two. I got to tell a random cashier to trust in Jesus. It's a good day, brah. Sis. And you know what? I didn't film it. I did it without the film. You know why? Because I love God. Like and I, filming it now. Yeah, but I'm talking about it. I want to encourage people. It's not to make me look good. Guys, I am not good. I'm not special. I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope that when I speak these words and share these words, they encourage or plant seeds with people. And she received it pretty well, right, honey? Yes. Like I said, it's, it's bragging in Christ. It's not bragging in me. This is not something I'm able to do on myself. This is the Holy Spirit working in me. If it was up to me, I would be like, yo, check out my band, I don't give an F word. I don't give a foxtrot. True story, by the way, that's not an exaggeration. So yes, it's always a good day when you get to share Jesus or encourage another believer. Amen. And then we drove to the Bonsall Shopping Center or something, I don't know what it's called. They were doing a Christmas tree lighting, but we were a little bit early, so we kind of just checked everything out. A bunch of the stores were hoping the influx of visitors would bring some extra business. And they had a bunch of merchants set up outside. They also had this really cool horse-drawn carriage. It looked really nice, too. And me and the family took a ride on it. You guys want to say what's up? What's up? Hey, everybody. Hello. Hey, Toby, it's your first Christmas. You got any words of wisdom? <laughs> the ride went around the parking lot. And, hey, it was pretty cool for a free ride. Toby seemed to really enjoy it. Then came the big moment. He got to meet Santa. I'm not big on the Santa thing. When he's older, I want him to know that I'm the one giving him the gifts and it's out of love. With the baby boy. Did you just meet Santa Claus? Oh, holy exposure. Did you just meet Santa Claus? And that about wrapped it up. A 
so we got home just before sunset. Toby was playing with his toys, and it was time for me to feed the animals. Well, it's time to feed the animals. It's funny, you step outside, and all the sheep and goats start buying. So let's go feed them. What do you say? Are you hungry? If you're hungry, say bye. Nah. Look who it is. We've got black chicken. Hi, Fever. So one of our chickens was almost killed by our dog when she got out. And I mean, I'm learning chickens are like the toughest animals on earth. We recently cut the chicken's wings, but they still jump on this thing. That's why we have to leave Timber locked up, because he will kill them. It's sad, man. One of them did die. It was like Fight Club. We named her after death. We called her Lucky after she died. And it's really sad, because she really was my favorite of the original chickens, because she always looked at me like this. That's right, I got on video before she died. When you gonna feed the nay? When you gonna feed the nay nay? Alright, he's he's gonna get fed. I'm just trying to feed the sheep first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go feed the sheep. So we moved the sheep down here because there were tons of tumbleweeds. So we, I originally bought the sheep because I wanted a petting zoo, but also because the first year I cut all the weeds and it took forever. I figured if we just get a bunch of sheep, just make them do it, and they get food out of it, so everyone's happy. <coughs> What's up, babies? Hi, Wooly! <coughs> ba ram you Ba ram you Wendy, what's a baby? Oh, don't bite me! I don't have food, you big silly. And we have them locked up right now because grass is growing back. We just had some rain last week. And it's really funny because in California, you get a couple days of rain, the grass grows like violently. So we're gonna let them back out there once it grows a little bit. All right, babies, you hungry? Who's hungry? Who's hungry? Ba? Who's hungry? Man. So I keep the hay out here for now because we're feeding them while we're waiting for the grass to grow back. And actually I feel kind of bad because it's like torture. <laughs> when they're hungry, it's like an inch from their face. It's kind of mean. I, but they don't think like humans, so I don't think they care. They just want food. So let me just shut up and feed them. Everybody's happy. And even as I'm editing this, I think about how grateful I am to God. I have a beautiful family. I live on a ranch in the most beautiful city in America. And it's all because of the mercy and love that God showed me. If he hadn't restored me, I would have kept living life sad, lonely, selfish, and miserable. All this almost never existed. This life I'm living almost was the life that never happened. But for the mercy and love and kindness of my Lord Jesus Christ.